Everyone, meteorologist Aaron Tuttle with you. It is it's a little after six o'clock, so I've been watching the storms develop out here just west of the Oklahoma City metro area, and we do have a tornado watch that's been issued from the National Weather Service. Storms are finally getting to that point where they're severe, and they also have a little bit of rotation with them, so we'll start to increase the coverage now to make sure we catch them if they do produce a tornado. And we'll look at each one of these to find out uh, which has the best potential for that to happen. So thanks for joining me. This will probably be Either it's going to be an extended coverage that goes on for a while, or it might be one that's on for a little bit, and then we kind of watch things, and nothing looks like it's going to happen, may go off, and then come back on, something like that. Uh, make sure you tell your friends and family about AT's weather and how they can watch uh, live severe weather coverage uh, without all the hype and anxiety. That way it's nice, calm, cool, collected, uh, and everybody keep their wits about them as they seek shelter, if needed, if they're in the path of some of these storms. So thanks for joining me. All right, with all that said and done, let me make sure I've got all my ducks in a row here, that everything has gone out um, as I planned. Let's see here. Everything looks good there on uh, YouTube. Got to check all the um, sources here. All right, so that's going. Okay. Uh, you guys on Twitter are good. Yeah, so I'm broadcasting four methods like usual. So it'll be Rumble, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and Facebook. So for whatever reason, if one's giving you trouble, you can always go to the others, okay? All right, so that's done. So let's go, and the first thing I actually want to show you is um, we do have uh, some of my storm chasers out today chasing. So um, Twisting Fury is out on the roads right now. He's just on the west of the metro, so we're going to pull up his feed once he gets closer in to the storm, and we'll be able to get a really good view uh, as to whether or not he's got a developing tornado or not. Like right now, in his view, he's got this little scud area underneath the rain-free base, so that's what he's watching. So we'll watch to see if this particular area starts to uh, develop. Um, but he's northwest of Oklahoma City, for example. So that's kind of what we're going to be watching for. So I'll tune in those guys every now and then during the coverage. Um, just sent out a uh, notification to all my app users in this area. Uh, just kind of let them know that severe weather coverage has started. Uh, that includes the trade of watch that's in effect. All right, so let's get rid of that. And let me turn that off. All right. Okay. So let's go on. The first thing I'm going to show you, now we got all that business cleared up. Uh, out of the way. The trade of watch is in effect. It goes to about midnight. It's this area shaded here in yellow. So it covers pretty much the central corridor of Oklahoma, southwest back toward Lawton. It's for winds that will be gusting up to 60 to 70 miles per hour in some of the stronger storms. It's for a movement of the storm moving northeast about 35. It is not a what they call a particularly dangerous situation. So that's not on the docket today. Uh, hey, max hail size is two inches. Right now, most of the data I've seen caps at about a golf ball size, about an inch and three quarter. But that would be the max end that we should see, if that at all. I think most of the hail will be either uh, smaller than golf balls, kind of between one inch to maybe as much as the golf ball size. So that helps to limit some of the damage with it, but that's what's on the docket for today. So if we go up the line, we'll start north. Again, you got up here in North Ponca City, Red Rock, no big deal. Just showers there. We do have some thunderstorms, a little bit of lightning out here west of Guthrie with this one that's coming in the, between Kingfisher and Mole Hall. Um, so that one's your standard severe thunderstorm warning on it, moving to the northeast at a whopping 59 miles per hour, though. Typical max hail size of one inch, uh, 60 mile per hour winds, Kingfisher, Crescent, Covington, Marshall, Orlando, and um, level with this one. Uh, and we're going to see that kind of a lot, I think, on the standard wording for some of these. Uh, let me see. Let's get to the leading edge of this one. So this is the leading edge of, of all this stuff. It's a little heavier than what you've seen so far uh, out ahead of it. So Marshall, Perry, Red Rock here by 631. Uh, Marlin, 638. Ponca City, 648. And that's just for this one cell here, assuming it stays on its same track trajectory and it stay, stays pretty strong. The next severe thunderstorm morning, west of Oklahoma City, Let's see, it's going to be this guy here in the orange. Moving to the northeast at 43, expires about 6.30. Radar indicated hail threat of about 1.5 inches in diameter. 60 mile per hour winds, El Reno, Calumet, Concho, Cedar Lake. Uh, so this will be passing to the west side of the greater Oklahoma City metro area. So we're pretty much right up to Piedmont by about 6.40. Cashing coming in right around 6.54. 
All right, we'll go down the south from there. This storm here is probably the best looking storm right now and has a little bit more of the right move with it. Severe thunderstorm morning till 645 for this particular guy here, moving northeast at 35. Uh, hail size one inch, 60 mile per hour winds, Fort Cobb, Grace Mont, Placasset, Fort Cobb Reservoir, Cougar, Albert, and Lake Chickasha. So if we do a little storm track on here, it actually takes it toward the Union City Tuttle area up to close to about seven o'clock. All right, so if you do notice in this region here for Gracemont, we'll zoom in here, there is a little bit of a, uh, um, there's one report anyway of a rotating wall cloud north of their location, looking into this area of the storm, just northeast of Fort Cobb. So he's looking back into this little region right here uh, for a potential development of a wall cloud, which would have a funnel and eventually a tornado should that continue to take shape. So that's the area of the storm that we'll watch for. And there's a little purple area which indicates some pretty good hail. It's on a county road 170, I think that was. Um, yeah, seven or 1720. Uh, let's go to, I believe that was the last of these severe, and there's just scattered showers south and west of that. So those are our three storms so far. Again, the first two, not a big deal right now. It's this guy down here that would have the best potential for a potential um, development out of that. Now, these storms will rotate, so you may hear the term rotation a lot today. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. Uh, they're supercells, and supercells rotate. Uh, probability of a tornado right now is at 8%. So that's pretty low. Um, so when this thing ramps up and we get into the 40 or 50 percentage, that's where you start to really kind of focus and get your attention on that. Uh, let's see. If we look at the wind speed so far in this... Mm, nothing low levels that gets my attention. It's all just mid-level rotation at this point in time. So that's good. We don't want the low-level stuff. We just want the mid-level stuff. Mid-level stuff is typical. That's where you get your hail. Um, low-level stuff is where you get your tornado. So let's take a look here at, let's go aloft. See what the storm looks like in a three-dimensional view. It's a pretty good, healthy storm. It's about 50,000 feet tall. Um, the real big storm, say like, for example, in the late spring, early summer can reach 60,000, 65,000 feet. They get really big sometimes. This one right now is still pretty decent for spring, right around 50. And there's your hail core, this little floating uh, purple area there. So there's where you're going to find your golf ball size hail. Any hail outside of that, this little spot will be smaller and uh, still held aloft by the updraft until it comes down. So that's what we have right now aloft. So that's the storm structure. So in other words, it's still in its infancy stage, but it is developing. All right, new scan came in, everything looks good there. Okay, so at this point in time, what you usually see is a lot of lowerings. You see what we call a lot of scud, which is just moisture that condenses and updrafts. You see wall clouds, or could be looking like a wall cloud, where it either rotates or doesn't rotate. So you have a lot of that too. Um, so in the early stages, there's a lot of confusion sometimes as to what, what's happening, right? Uh, and then eventually it gets a little better organized and it's no mistake at all what's happening. It's usually got a nice, well-defined, rain-free base where the wall cloud is and then usually a funnel and then we go from there. Up the road, by the way, this probability of this tornado is uh, 7% for the one near El Reno and the one up around Crescent is at 16%. And actually, um, when I first was looking at some of the data, this actually had a little bit of a, a better circulation with it about, oh, 20 minutes ago. Uh, but it hasn't really had one since that's been that good. Um, so we'll just kind of keep an eye on it right now. It's, uh, even though the algorithm is going up a little bit, it's still not in that worrisome area. A uh, new warning came up here for this stuff around the Perry area. Probability of it is also at 17%. So hmm, seems to be a common number. Uh, that just could be because it's the atmosphere. So anything that goes up in this environment may end up having some of those numbers because uh, this is going to be a favorable environment in general where you see this uh, blue outline here on the screen. That's the uh, really best conditions for trying to produce a tornado. And it just happens to be you know, Oklahoma City centered in that, which is why you've had a lot of discussion about it. Every then I'll stop so I can read um, information from the uh, National Weather Service. Okay, so this is where we just kind of start to look at each individual thing for a little bit and if I don't see anything concerning uh, that's good news and usually in those cases if it's going to be just a standard marginal low-end uh, thunderstorm severe thunderstorm I usually don't worry too much about it uh, but I do cover the ones that looks like they could produce a tornado or of course are producing one so that's what we're here to do here together 
All right. So if you haven't done so, make sure you tap notifications on all the social media platforms so you can get notified when I do go live in case I sign off later and come back on. You won't miss that. Um, I watch, just so you know, I watch the all three uh, TV stations for their helicopter shots because that's great information. I check in with the National Weather Service here on my left. I've got three different radar panels here. I think actually four. Um, and then I got my storm stations we'll look at. So we got a lot of information plus all the normal stuff I share with you on the weather day that we can analyze together on the fly. So that's a multitasking nightmare, <laughs> but it's done. All right, so at the bottom of this crawl, um, if you're new to Oklahoma or you're just new to the severe weather in general, you're really not sure what to make of all this, and if you do get a storm, what do you do? At the bottom, it tells you everything you need to do. Um, so make sure you read that a couple of times, get familiar with it. But the bottom line is you're gonna make sure that you're always in the center part of any structure, building, home. Um, you're gonna be at the lowest level, lowest floor. If it's if there's an underground floor, so be it, that's even better, but the lowest level. Um, and then if like your home, you're in the center part, uh, closet, bathroom, staircase, anything like that. Any, anytime you're away from outside walls and windows, when it comes to a tornado, that's what you wanna do. And then you can put on quite a bit of stuff around you to protect yourself. All right, so what we're gonna do is kind of stay focused on this Grace Mountain. So the probability of a tornado went from 4% to 7%. So it's a very slow increase in the parameters. Um, that said, nothing standing out with me yet on the uh, velocity side as far as uh, the structure of uh, rotation. So it's still developing slowly. That's the other thing is, this is not an explosive storm environment. In other words, where something goes from zero to crazy in 30 minutes. This is a very, it's, it's, it's they start at five o'clock, it's, it's almost an hour and 15 minutes before these things finally got to a point where they could turn severe. Um, and different environments of the atmosphere will allow things to happen much more rapidly and faster. This one is a very slow evolving process. Now we'll show you this. So let's go and take a look at the shear here across central Oklahoma. All right, so in other words, can these storms produce tornadoes? If you do look here, this last column on the right, you have a south wind around 35 knots, and then that goes to more of a southwest wind, and then kind of still stays a southwest wind, the kind of west-southwest. Wind speeds in general increase with height. So this is a favorable uh, profile for tornadoes. Now, it has a little weakness in it only, and that is the southeast wind right here does not exist. If there was a southeast wind component, this would be a, a, a much different outcome. But with a southerly wind component, it just makes it just a tad bit harder to produce a tornado. Uh, but that's the only limiting factor. Otherwise, it's good enough uh, in this particular case with some of the other parameters that we have to work with. All right, so let's take a look. Let's do a little um, check here. So there's his, uh, and let me load up his deal here actually. All right, I'm at 152 in cemetery getting gas and then I'm headed on to these storms. Okay, so that was uh, one of my storm chasers checking in. So that's good. All right, so I got his YouTube feed up here. Let's see. So YouTube said he was live, but I think he may have ended that one. I think he ended that one. So we'll stick with this Facebook for now. Some of them will, will multicast on both of them, um, YouTube and Facebook. All right, so he just ended it just a couple minutes ago. So he's going he's gonna to go up and down with his uh, live broadcast, that's why. Okay, then Jeremy will get his going here in a little bit. Um, and when he does, we can pull his up. Let's see. Up these other guys, they're not quite up yet, but when they do, we'll pull theirs as well. All right, let's go look at a couple of things here on the data side of things. This is the, from the Storm Prediction Center, this is the trade to watch that's in effect, this little uh, outline here. What's neat about this page, you can click on probabilities, and the probabilities will tell you uh, the threat, threat holes, threshold. So the likelihood of tornadoes is moderate, but the likelihood of a EF2 plus, in other words, stronger than that, EF3, EF4, EF5, is low. Severe wind moderate, um, the, anything higher than 65 knots is low, meaning they should be within 60 to 70 miles per hour only. 
Uh, severe weather for hail is moderate. Two inch size hail is moderate. Now I would have kept, probably kept this low myself because I just don't know if we're gonna see a whole lot of reports of two inch or probably a few. So I'd have put that in the low, but that's just semantics on that. Then we look at the probability of the tornadoes, at least two or more, it's moderate, so that's 50%. And if you look at the probability of a very strong tornado, it is low, 20%. So your takeaway from this is we'll probably have a couple of tornadoes today and they should be on the lower end, EF0, EF1, possibly EF2. But other than that, nothing that says anything higher than that. So that's some good. And I'm telling you, we've come a long way in the science when we look at this kind of stuff, which is really good. So here's your severe weather risk here, again, for the remainder of this uh, evening. And there's your tornado risk in the same region. Um, we also have a little bit of a flood risk, a flash flood risk for those storms that do kind of sit in rain for quite a while. And also on Sunday, we have a risk of flooding especially across the southern and southeastern and eastern parts of Oklahoma. So keep that in mind here for tomorrow. We look at the temperatures and the winds right now. Our little dry line action is setting up right about like this. And this is what's getting those storms to fire in this region. So we had the best convergence here and here, um, which is actually a lot better than models indicated. So that means this area is, why, is what popped first. And sure enough, uh, we talked about this at uh, lunchtime today. And that said, this is probably the first area to go, and it did. So it fired right at 5 o'clock around the time, and then now they're kind of popping up the line as they move north and east, and then we're getting some new development back to the southwest, although not a whole lot. This area is still a little bit capped. But the other thing I've talked about to watch for is any dew points that happen to get in the mid-60s. Right now we've got 62, 62, but here's a 64, um, 63, 63. So we're just a degree or two away from significantly changing the environment when it comes to um, dew point values and what the storms had to work with. A little bit better moisture equals a little bit um, stronger outcome on the storms. But right now, temperatures are at least helping us a little bit as they're staying into the mid to upper 70s versus the 80s. All well, that cloud cover today kind of helped to keep things just a little more stable than otherwise could be. It helps keep the cape values down. Um, so then you have to depend to overcome that limitation with some much stronger shear. Now we do have the stronger shear, um, we have the lower cape. So again, it's not the perfect ideal situation for this type of stuff. We just have some of the ingredients, we don't have the best ingredients, uh, which is why I showed you those probabilities a little bit on the low side. Okay, so let me move on. I'm gonna, a lot of times I go through um, a lot of different maps, um, both as me to analyze stuff on the fly, then I'll explain some of that stuff to you. Uh, here's a look at the satellite viewpoint here on the infrared, and it shows these storms just bubbling up right here along that boundary we talked about. And you can see the brighter, or I should say the really dark reds, those are the tallest storms. So the tallest storm is that one down here in southwest of Oklahoma City, and that's the one we were talking about a moment ago that had just a little bit of rotation with it. Uh, but you can see the extensive cloud shield. All right, so James is heading to the one uh, near Gracemont. Excuse me, I'm at Minko. Grace Lawn, the storm headed towards Minko. Uh, let me know when you get your stream up. All right, so he's heading to that one. If we look at the photographs, and this one has been a little messy. Ugh, I don't know why they're so messy today. All right, but they do show a classic supercell type look to it. Um, right here so that and even though it's kind of ugly it's a it's a we call it a sickle shape it's just um, there's some bad data points in this particular case but that is what you need to get some rotation out of this stuff all right uh, if we do look at those photographs on a map um, where you get those little sickle shapes that's right here in central oklahoma here's east central north central a little bit it's a little ugly in the, on the northern on the tail end of this but it doesn't matter so much as the it's the first um, half of the atmosphere that matters the most for tornado genesis. Uh, let's see here, temperatures holding into the mid 80s in this region west of the dry line because it's getting hot out there without the uh, moisture to kind of keep things on the cooler side. But the convergence line, all that kind of stuff is just on the west side of the metro. Um, we've got the best indices, so that's not surprising. Okay, let me see what else we got. Um, so this is like the rotation tracker. I look for this for like low level rotation that's been going on for a while. Uh, and you can see with that storm near Gracemont here, a little bit of a trail starting to show up. Once it gets out of this gray into this scale ledge and it gets up higher into the reds to white to blue, that's where we're usually tracking a tornado or something really close. So it's just now gotten to the point where I get a little bit of a red. In other words, intensity is just now getting there. Let's see. Okay. 
oh, finally, let me see what the old tech model did today. So the tech model, it's not doing too well, but regardless, it has the storms that are about a county too far to the east. A lot of them have a, a lot of them have these way too far. They they should have been developing these things here. Instead, they've been developing here. They just have not done well this spring at all. They're having some trouble. All right, uh, let's see here. It does have that one helicity track though with that one. There's got some others south. Those move on off. So it just basically says a few storms get carried away. Um, that's kind of the takeaway from that. Even our high resolution that used it as really good, same idea. It, had, it blew up the cells here from Oklahoma County northward, um, but they were a county too far to the east. But at least that was somewhat close, and they did have that stuff developing southwest. So we have to take everything back by about 50 miles to make it true. Um, anyway, so that's kind of some of the data I'm looking at now. Okay, so let's go back to the radar view here. Let's get an update to see how those look. So the Gracemont uh, storm, 12% probability. It's got some wind uh, buried within it. Structure though is pretty, pretty sad. All right, so what else do we have? Let's go up the road here to uh, Canadian County, Piedmont area. Let's see if any of these have a little bit better structure, and they don't. Okay, so far all these storms are behaving, and then we've got the one up here, Crescent, Cimarron City. Remember earlier it had like a 17% probably the tornado and we actually have some decent rotation within this one so it even has a threshold for a, a TBS which is a tornado vortex signature triggered by the radar so this actually is the best storm so far um, and it was the one that had looked good earlier on when this whole thing kind of started kind of lost it and now it's kind of getting it back but right now that's the only one I see that's worthy of discussion 26 prob 26 percent probability of a tornado so it's getting higher in other words it's going up so weather service may end up producing a um, tornado warning with this here soon looks like mm, they're going to Walt's out on my live stream right now all right so Jeremy's got his up so let's go take a look Southbound, just north of Highway 33. Are you on your Facebook or your YouTube page? I'm on my personal Facebook. Ah, okay. All right. So let's go. Okay. So that's his live feed, and I believe he's pretty close to Guthrie. I think he says on 35 heading south, uh, just south of 33. So let's go take a look. Okay, so this is, he's looking back here to the west at the Cimarron storm. So he's looking at this area right here, east of Cimarron City by about two miles. And so he's watching that wall cloud develop in that region. It does have some low level rotation signature on radar. So let's go back to his feed. Now, of course, a lot of times this chaser, they run into cell phone issues, depending on which towers they're hitting, if there's too many chasers on the tower. So, but that's the last look they that had. So that's the little area that we're watching on radar to see if it ends up becoming a little bit better defined and, and producing a tornado. Uh, let's see here. So this storm is moving to the northeast at 30 miles per hour. The weather service did add a tornado tag to it. So it just means that it's a severe thunderstorm warning 
but it could potentially produce a tornado. In other words, this is what they issue before they issue a tornado warning. As things start to ramp up, but they're not quite there yet, it's just a, just in case it, it, it happens before they get a chance to, say, issue the official tornado warning. So they can do that sometimes. Um, the path on this particular circulation center, let's take a look at that. Uh, well, Cimarron City, but that's already come and gone. That's past there, so it, it's going to be south of Mole Hall, so it's not going to be over any populated areas, um, which is good. And then what we'll end up doing is, once it gets to that stage uh, where we've got an actual tornado to the track, uh, we can come down here, we can toggle off the radar view and see what it's over. And currently it's over a lot of farmland. There's a river. Uh, there's a couple little farmhouses in its path uh, for that storm, but no, no neighborhoods or anything like that as it works in the Logan County. So this is a storm east of Cimarron City. Probability of a tornado, let's see if that's changed. It's gone up to 36%. So if you watch me, it's gone up from, I think it was nine to 17 to 20 something, now we're at 36%. So this particular storm is trying to get its act together to produce a tornado. So those are the indices that forecast that. If we go down here to Southwest, uh, back to the Gracemont storm, Probability of a tornado is a 24% for that. Let me see. Although, uh, it's got still some mid-level circulation with it, but it's nothing um, at this point. That would be too concerning. So I'll keep an eye on it. It still has some time to go to get a little cleaned up. Stuff up here at the north, Ponk City, Red Rock, again, not a big deal for you guys. Standard thunderstorm, Oklahoma. Um, here on uh, Piedmont, same idea, standard thunderstorm. Really not even that much lightning with it, honestly. Uh, pretty weak. So it's this storm here north of Cedar Valley. Uh, seems to be the, the one that's getting most of the attention. Let's see. Let me refresh this feed in case... He went down. I saw your shot for a minute, but then it went uh, offline. Never mind, I see your backup. All right, so he is focused on this area where a funnel would develop and then where eventually the tornado would develop. And uh, so he's at a good spot. There's just nothing happened there just yet. All right, let's see. chances deal so he's in pursuit uh, so he's near uh, looks like Gracemont so he's got that uh, things getting on the southwestern storm so we'll check in with him um, as that one gets organized There's a nice expanded view of this one again real quick before he paused. All right, so we'll keep watching this. All right, hoping he gets uh, some good cell phone coverage here. All right. Velocity data just has some broad rotation with it, nothing crazy out of the, uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, let me look at some of the parameters that we have for this. So this is the wind shear as muthal, uh, in other words, where the best convergence is, where you see these little brown areas in the green. 
It's on County Road 76 between there and Cooksey Road. There's no roads in between, but that's where that was located. Arms move through. see that. to get broadcast state. All right, so I've got one of my um, lives not working right. So one of the social media platforms is having some trouble. Okay, so let me see. Hang on a minute. Make sure that I've got my lies are still up. All right, so you guys on Facebook are still good. That little error was for my camera that um, I pull in for the storms. So that connection died, it's not a big deal. Um, let's see, looks like you guys are still going on Twitter and you're still going, I believe, on YouTube. All right, so I think it's Rumble that lost his connection. So that's fine. So if you guys have any trouble with any of these platforms, just go to one of the others. So it's Rumble, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. and Looks like Twitter is also having some issues. It may have been Twitter, not Rumble. I can't tell which one goes down. It doesn't tell me. I just know that one of them had a problem. But as long as we keep going on the rest of them, we're still good. And then when if I ever get off and come back on, it'll reset that end of the connection. Okay, so we'll make sure we are still up and running. So let's go back here and let's get an update on what's happening. So the storm up here in the north, still waiting for it to do something. It's just um, lowering kind of an overall ragged base. So it's not an imminent forward tornado at all. It's just still trying to organize. The probability of a tornado is at 39%, so it has increased slowly. So in other words, we call it ramping up, I guess but on a slow level. And it's starting to try to get that um, hook echo look to it. Um, let me try a different color here. So it kind of comes in like this and wraps around. So it's trying to get that little kidney bean look to it. Uh, it's just really slow go. So that's a good sign though. The longer it takes to do that, the less time it produces a tornado. That's the way I look at it. All right, so we'll go back down here to the Minko storm. This one's getting that more of that kidney bean uh, hook echo look to it like this okay so this is kind of a little bit better organizing the structure probably the tornado for it is 21 percent 21 percent uh twitter's down yeah as jody let me know twitter was down so this one's still rfd driven and actually it's not even hold on a second what time is that there we go yeah still rfd driven so as long as it's RFD driven, and that means these winds here are rushing out like this. And it's like a mini coal front almost. So until this stops, and you have a balance where you have the winds that come into this area more equal toward it, um, 
once that happens, you'll start to get like an area of development for like a potential tornado anywhere in this region. But if these are too strong, that kind of cuts off the inflow. So that has to weaken a little bit. But if it doesn't weaken, that's great. That means you're going to still get some straight line winds coming to Minko, for example. Uh, but at least you won't have the tornado. All right. Now, I will say this. Um, straight line winds can do as much damage as a small tornado. But it's just over a larger area. So that is something to keep in mind. All right, so where the strongest winds are is back here on the county line um, from the Caddo and Grady County line east of Spring Creek. And that's North Road 2750. Uh, let's see if I can... Let's get those winds on the radar here for you. Let's do this. We'll zip on down. All right, so we'll probe this one. It's about 58, close to 60 mile per hour winds um, in this severe thunderstorm. So, and believe it or not, a severe thunderstorm has to have at least 58 mile per hour winds. So it actually barely meets the criteria. Now, if they can get some hail reports out of that, they're an inch in diameter, that would also do it. And right now, the algorithms are saying the hail could be as high as two and a quarter inches. The warning is for an inch and a half. Uh, sometimes these hail detections are accurate and sometimes they're a little overdone, sometimes a little underdone. Uh, right now, it's saying that could be the max size within the storm aloft. So we shall see how that turns out. Other storms down here in southwest Oklahoma. There's a storm down here for Snyder. Uh, let's see, that'll be heading up toward Apache, just west of there, and eventually toward Grace Mont for this one. Um, no major towns in the path of it right now. Uh, it's moving to the northeast at about 33, so hail threats radar indicated, typical 60 mile per wind gusts, Snyder, Boone, Western, Fort Sill, Wichita Mountains, Wildlife Refuge. So that's a storm in southwest Oklahoma. Uh, looking at the velocity data, there's really nothing on there to write home about. It's got a little bit of lightning with it, so it's kind of new. So I would just expect the line of just severe thunderstorms off and on throughout the whole line as some of these storms kind of pulse up in nature. If we go up to the north, Perry, guys up around Red Rock, these aren't really much to write home about. Don't get too worried about it. Some lightning finally associated with this one. Um, one strike in the last eight minutes, past three minutes. So. It's not a whole lot of lightning, but that one up here in northern Oklahoma. Bell sound to, uh, to Highway 33. Head back east. All right, so that was Jeremy um, watching that lowering. Let me go back. So oh, we lost his signal. All right, so when he comes back up, this is what he had, and um, so there wasn't anything yet to to look at. So he's on the move. Okay, so let me go back here. So he's going to try to stay with this storm. The probability of the tornado has gone up to 63%. So um, if I hear that Jody tells me that the YouTube audio is messed up, which usually means it gets out of sync. If that's the case, you can flip over to Facebook um, and watch that. What I could do, because I may be on for a while once this thing produces a tornado, um, I really don't want to get off the air but I think I'm gonna to have to so I can solve this issue and not have to deal with it the rest of the night um, and we still got some time before this thing produces it's still gonna be at least another five ten minutes before anything happens minimal all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign off um, look for another notification for Facebook Twitter YouTube I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave a rumble off I think that might be the wild card that's messing stuff up they're new I haven't really tested them much I had had problems before them, including them. So we'll leave Rumble off for now. Um, so if you guys are on Rumble watching, go to a YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter feed uh, to watch coverage from that point forward. All right. So I'll be back here in about five minutes once we get everything queued back up. Um, by the way, uh, Melania, welcome uh, on YouTube.